This episode will focus on controlling nail product exotherms. An exotherm is, means overheating. It's simply a scientific term that means to release heat. So when products exotherm, it's because they're releasing heat. Now today we'll discuss why nail coating products get hot during application and what can be done to prevent this. Both UV gels and liquid and powder systems can become warm or even hot during application. Warming isn't a problem, and it's considered to be normal for a product that cures or polymerizes to create a, to create a nail coating. It's considered normal for these to, to warm up a bit on the nail plate. But now, when these coatings overheat, this can be painful for clients, and it can create other problems as well. Uh, overheating can create nail bed damage and infections, for instance. Now, when I say nail bed, I mean the part of the nail anatomy that's underneath the nail plate, and the nail plate sits on top of the nail bed. I know some people use that term incorrectly, so I wanted to clarify that. But overheating can actually damage the nail bed itself and create infections, as I said. And I'll explain later how this can occur. If you understand why these issues can occur, well, then you can avoid them. So that's really the point of this information. So let's take a look at the most common reasons why clients feel heat when these types of products cure. Both UV gels and monomer liquids are both made using acrylic ingredients and acrylic chemistry. Uh, this surprises some people, but it's a fact. UV gels and liquid monomers are all based on acrylic chemistry and use acrylic ingredients, and there's no exceptions to this rule. So when I talk about curing these two types of products, then I'm saying the same thing because, again, the chemistry between them is the same. So curing, or polymerization, this occurs as millions of tiny invisible molecules begin to permanently join together to create many growing polymer chains. Think about adding a, a pearl on the end of a strand. Each time one is added to the end of the strand, this chain gets longer and longer. Now, I'll talk in more detail about this process in upcoming episodes, because it's a very important process to understand. But for now, I just want to focus on what happens when one molecule permanently joins one of these growing chains. Each time a molecule reacts in a joining like this, there's a tiny release of heat. Uh, 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 so another a very tiny amount of heat is released. Uh, the heat released by one molecule joining a chain is far too small to detect by even the most sophisticated methods. So you're not going to feel it. But when millions of nail molecules join together, well, you get millions of more times heat. And when a coating cures on a single nail plate, it contains many millions of molecules. So you can see why when a nail itself uh, cures, it's going to release much more heat than simply one molecule join a chain, as I first described. Now, normally this occurs on every nail plate, and normally heating is not an issue. Excess heat can be released, though, and it can be, can be painful and potentially damaging under some circumstances. And this is true for all types of artificial nail coatings and, and even glues and adhesives. There's no exception. They all warm up when they cure. Now, when properly formulated and properly applied, the heat release usually goes completely unnoticed. Now, there are some products that aren't properly formulated and may have a tendency to overheat even when they're properly applied. But I believe this is an unusual event and not likely because manufacturers that create reputable manufacturers that create reputable products, they run quality control testing on their products to ensure that these types of things aren't going to occur. This is really one of many reasons why you should only purchase your products from reputable manufacturers to ensure this kind of testing is done. Now, the people who develop these products, or product developers, they pay very close attention to this exotherming issue. And they design their products so they slowly release heat during curing, rather than release it in sudden heat spikes. Because heat spikes can obviously cause problems and burns. Now, to fully understand this issue, we need to understand what a friction burn is. Because heat becomes even more noticeable if the nail bed is injured, for instance, from aggressive overfiling. Think about it. The nail plate insulates the nail bed from heat. If the nail plate is overly thin by filing, well, it becomes a poor barrier for heat, and that thinner nail plate will allow heat to flow through the nail plate into the nail bed. And this extra heat can cause the nail bed injury and, uh, as I said, uh, other types of damage and infection, potential infection, as I, I mentioned earlier. So, we want to avoid overly aggressive filing techniques, because any overly aggressive, aggressive filing techniques can friction burn the nail bed. 
Now, when the nail bed becomes super, it becomes even very super sensitive to what I'm trying to say. The nail bed becomes super sensitive to heat, even small amounts of heat that would normally go unnoticed if it's friction burn. I'll give you an example. If I rub my arm five times, well, that doesn't harm it. But if I do that 500 times, that will. Or if I press down harder and I just rub 50 times, I can still friction burn my skin. The same is true when we file the nail plate. Don't burn the bed. We want to protect the nail bed and keep, from, keep it from becoming injured. We can do that by filing gently and avoiding coarse abrasive that thin the nail plate. Now, interestingly, the nail bed itself does not contain any heat detectors. We get heat detectors on the tips of our fingers because that's where we need to feel heat. Our nail bed normally doesn't need to feel heat, but it does contain pressure detectors, nerves that are connected to our brain that sense pressure. Now, these nerves can be triggered to produce painful burning session, uh, uh, sensations. When these detectors, these pressure detectors, are heated above 115 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 46 degrees centigrade, they go off like a fire alarm in the brain. The brain sends a strong pain signal back to the nail bed to warn of potential danger, saying, stop doing that, uh, you're damaging the nail bed. Now, when the nail bed becomes irritated by this friction burn, it will overreact even to warm temperatures. It's what I call the sore tooth syndrome. If I tap on my tooth, well, that doesn't hurt. But if I have a sore tooth or a toothache, that would hurt tremendously because my tooth is sensitive. We can make our nail beds sensitive to warmth, uh, even normal warmth, by friction, uh, uh, friction burning or over filing the nail plate. But there are several other reasons for overheating that we should discuss and understand. For instance, let's look at why liquid and powder formulas can overheat. One way would be using the wrong powder polymer with the liquid monomer. Uh, that can cause overheating. You should only use the polymer powder that was designed for the monomer liquid of your choice. That's called not breaking systems. I talked about that in episode three. Please go back and check it out because it's an important issue. Another thing we need to think about are fast setting products. Fast setting products actually release the same amount of heat as a, tradi as a traditional setting product, but it does it in a shorter period of time. Now, this heat the heat released in a two or three minute uh, period would generally be unnoticed, but if we take that same amount of heat and release it in less than a minute, that's what can create a heat spike. And it becomes especially detectable if our nail beds are, sense are, are friction burned by uh, aggressive filing. So fast setting products are best used in cold climates. That's what they're really designed for. Now, because since room temperature plays a big role in determining how quickly liquid and powder will harden or polymerize, Fast set products are much more likely to overheat when used on warm days or, or in, when the salon is warm, I should say. So avoid them on, on at least warm days. That's a better way of putting that. Now, UV gels can also generate heat spikes, especially on friction burn nail beds. You can really feel them. Uh, the heat spikes uh, that uh, are released when UV gels are cured can often be caused by using an incorrect UV nail lamp to cure that UV uh, gel. A UV gel is designed to cure, uh, let me back up. A UV gel that's designed to cure with a traditional fluorescent uh, style nail lamp is likely going to overheat if you cure it using an LED style UV nail lamp. LED nail lamps produce more UV than traditional nail lamps. This is why they can cure more quickly. So if a UV gel that's designed to cure in two minutes under a fluorescent style UV nail lamp is cured with an LED in 30 seconds, all that heat is released in one quarter of the time and you get a heat spike. So the result is the result can be a painful burning sensation and it could result in onycholysis. When the nail bed separates from the nail plate and creates that space, that can lead to infections as well. So although this isn't the most likely reason for onycholysis, I'll talk about other more likely reasons in upcoming episodes Certainly uh, overfiling the natural nail and, and, using, uh, and, and uh, getting these heat spikes on the nail bed can, can lead to this type of, type of problem. So uh, be aware of that so we can avoid them. Now, one thing that's true of both liquid and powder, as well as UV curing products, is the thicker the artificial nail coating, the more heat that will be released. Well, we can know why that is, because if you have twice as thick of a coat, you have twice as many millions of products releasing twice as many millions of heat. 
This is often why the larger thumb nail plates will feel warmer than compared to smaller nail plates, because the larger thumbnails contain more product, and that more product can release potentially more heat. So, speaking of thumbs, let's talk about a couple general rules of thumb, or some general rules that you can follow to avoid overheating on your client's nail bed. First, avoid friction burning the nail bed. Don't burn the bed by overfiling. Don't overthin the nail plate either. Keep it healthy and intact. Use the correct polymer powders with the monomer liquids of your choice, and avoid using fast setting liquid and powders in warm salons. Uh, use a UV nail lamp that's recommended for use by the UV gel manufacturer, and be careful to avoid applying product too thickly, especially UV gels.